Hello everyone and happy holidays, happy Christmas, happy new year, happy everything from wherever you are all over the world. Uh, this video is a little bit different from the ones I've made before, uh, not like my documentary series uh, for DRM or my new uh, ongoing project with the kind of documenting touring car racing thing. Uh, that has its first episode out at the moment. This is more of a kind of a personal rant about something I've wanted to kind of portray in sim racing for a very long time until just recently kind of with help figuring out how to do so. So uh, I'll just get straight into it. So um, if you followed my channel for a while you know that I am quite the avid uh, sim racer and I have quite a lot of uh, projects that I uh, have done on specifically Automobilista 1 as one of my favorite sims and I've brought a lot of uh, seasons constantly updating them recently I updated uh, American Le Mans series 2008 and uh, my Formula 1 1991 mod in collaboration with ASR Formula I recently have um, just given those a little bit of spruce and polish. Uh, but a season I've wanted to do for the longest time now and have been unable to have been the kind of technological era of Formula One being 1992 and 1993. Um, they're my uh, top kind of seasons of F1 apart from the Turbo era, uh, kind of 1985, 1986, 1987. Um, they would be the top um, years of Formula One that I would enjoy the most from the visual aesthetics of the cars to the talent in the field at the time to the literal fact that they are the most advanced Formula One cars um, ever built in a single season over a field. And the main attraction of that was obviously the active suspension. Uh, in the Williams cars, the McLaren cars, the f I think the Ferrari, they had an element of active suspension but it wasn't quite up to snuff and the Lotus cars I believe as well and these are features that haven't really ever been portrayed in sim racing because they just you can't really be bothered because they're, they're it's just annoying, it's difficult you can't figure out how to have individually reacting suspension components while you're driving on track and you know kind of imitate that behavior and all the advantages and disadvantages that come with it so it's kind of been overlooked you have your traction control your abs fuel mix options things like that all of that can be simulated in some shape or form but uh, active suspension is Particularly one thing that has uh, been elusive in sim racing until as of just recently in Automobilista 2 where it was brilliantly simulated there by uh, the team at Razor Studios who are consequently behind Automobilista 1 as well. So I recently got into conversation with the great Niels Husingfeld who made the physics of Automobilista 1 and I asked him for help on how it could be possible to simulate this type of um, physics, the active suspension, in a game that doesn't have it and uh, it was quite interesting and a little bit frustrating but quite fun and um, I'm just going to use this video to basically explain and demonstrate it and then hopefully down the line I'll release it with a full 1993 season mod for Automobilista 1. So getting into it, first of all, what is active suspension? So because I'm not a genius and because the internet is a great thing, a quick Google search on Wikipedia tells us that active suspension is a type of automotive suspension, so automatic, it acts individual of its own, that uses an onboard control system to control the movement of the axles and the wheels relative to the chassis rather than conventional passive suspension that relies on the springs to maintain support 
and dampen the the kind of shocks uh, that reverberate through the suspension. It automatically adjusts and adapts to the road as it comes, um, raising and lowering the car to keep it stable. And it tries to eliminate uh, body roll and pitch variation in the cornering, accelerating, braking, any you know, traditional driving movement. And we wonder, how can you do this in a simulator that only has traditional suspension uh, in its future system? And um, the answer was surprisingly quite simple, at least we think in theory. We lie through our teeth and pretend that the game thinks it's doing something correct when it's not. So we did a couple of things. We made the diffuser ride height less sensitive, so we can't be at one ride height at all the time, it's impossible, due to the laws of physics. So we'll have the same downforce at a larger range of ride height. Uh, next, we knew that because there's no active suspension in the game, what can we do to keep the, the, the car from bottoming out as much as possible before we even worry about what we're going to do to the suspension physics? So, what's in contact with the road all the time? The tires. So, the only thing that we can really use to give this effect is the tires when it came to active suspension mainly. Um, there's a feature in the Automobilista physics files called Radius RPM in general for the ISI physics engine that can add ride height as downforce comes in. Usually a tire is supposed to squish as uh, the force of the road is impacted on it with downforce and things like that but instead in our inspector gadget kind of fashion ours expands as the tire gets faster so uh, millimeters are added uh, the faster the car goes which keeps the the active suspension effect then um, obviously you can't have soft uh, suspension arms or soft suspension springs since the whole point is to keep the ride heights at a specific value at all speeds uh, which normally is impossible as tires squish and uh, the, uh, the suspension gets compressed um, so the whole thing has to be stiff and rigid uh, in order to keep the minimal body roll as possible while we have our expanding tire and our uh, suspension model which has uh, its edits to minimalize as much bump and rebound activity as possible within the car. Niels also went out of his way to create a new aerodynamic model for the car based on his myriad of spreadsheets and notes and references and all that good stuff so we'd have an ac accurate frame of reference for the kind of downforce the car would be getting under the, the tire activity and the suspension activity and then nullifying the effect of the suspension and tire bottoming out. Uh, by making the suspension behave in a way that is able to handle those levels of downforce throughout corners and straights and things. We also introduced a, a third spring to keep the car even more stable and um, under this, those kind of speeds. But um, obviously then there's drawbacks with running such a stiff car with uh, constantly trying to keep the ride height that um, it has to be driven quite robotically and smoothly otherwise uh, it'll spin out which is 
a bit of a contrast to passive suspension cars that will be in the mod that can be kind of ragged around a bit more than an active suspension car although an active suspension car would be quicker in theory so that would hopefully bring the car in line in terms of strengths and weaknesses with what Alan Prost experienced when the car misinterpreted the road um, from the, the computers and gave the car erroneous and uh, unpredictable behavior. And then along with that, you had the advantage of the push to pass that I believe the Williams had and one or two other cars, maybe the McLaren and the Benetton, uh, where they were able to raise the car in the straights with a push of a button and essentially reduce drag and get a, a better top speed out of the car for overtaking so the there would be more airflow under the car because the car would be raised and overall uh, the wings would not be creating much drag the diffuser the whole car would be um, temporarily streamlined and that would be a, a huge advantage that the active suspension teams would have had Finally, the main problem we had with simulating active suspension would be how would the AI understand it? Because we're already tricking the game engine with various physical changes that are going against um, some laws of physics in order to get the effect that we desire. But then we have to have the computer AI driving the car somewhat with its simplified physics grasp how the car should handle so this can also then be very problematic in its own right so on my end because i've had quite a bit of experience with tweaking the ai in this game i decided that um the ai would then counter in theory counterintuitively run a bit softer um, so the car does spark when the AI drives but um, the effect visually is there where the the AI is um, having suspension arms kind of adjust as they go along um, and then in general you have the performance of the car would, which would help the AI uh, be faster naturally so it looks like it sort of has active suspension but it, it really doesn't it's just the the animation is kind of helped there but um the suspension then in itself the suspension physics with the the the, damp, the bump and rebound uh, travel cancelling each other out kind of and having compliant bump stops and dampers um also helps with uh keep the ai looking quite um keeps the ai looking authentic um as it's not bottoming out all the time with the sparks and uh, the suspension is notably noti noticeably uh smoother than a passive car so yeah that just about wraps it up and uh, like i said happy christmas and things and such and uh, I hope you enjoy the release when it comes. I uh, might record a hot lap or something later on to demonstrate the car. But other than that, I hope you like uh, the way I lie to this game to try and simulate something. Goodbye.